morning. Welcome to Sunday Online Worship from St. Andrew's United Methodist Church, Fort Worth, Texas. We're thankful and blessed that you're joining us in the worship of our Lord today. You're invited to sit back, relax, and take in the full measure of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. God who formed us in your image. God, we approach your throne this morning, God, recognizing that it's only by your grace and your mercy that we are here today. We thank you, Father God, for opening our eyes this morning, for blessing us to see this day. This is the day that you created, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Father God, for this morning. We thank you, Father God, for this hour. But most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who hung, who bled, and who died on the cross for our sins. And we thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit, who reveals all truth, who speaks in our behalf even when we don't know what to say when we pray, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you this morning for just being who you are, God, the God who says, I am that I am. The God who promises never to leave us nor forsake us. The God who gives us new mercies every day. So we just thank you, God. We thank you, Father God, for just doing what you do, Father God. You continually show mercy to us day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, God. We thank you, Father God, for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. Lord God, this morning we ask, Father God, that you would... Just be with us this morning, Father God, as we worship you. We ask, God, that you would allow us to feel your presence. We're not going to invite you in because you're already here, Father God. So we just ask, Father God, that you allow us to feel you, Father God. We know that you're always with us, Father God, because your word tells us you would never leave us nor forsake us. So we ask, Father God, that you would have mercy, Father God, on us, your people, Father. You gathered us today, Father God, this hour to magnify your name, to give you praise. And that's what we're going to do, Father. We're here this morning to give you praise. We ask God that as we gather, whether we're here in the building, whether we're on social media, Facebook, YouTube, wherever we are, Father God, we ask, Father God, that you would just have mercy on us, God. Lord God, you... Know the, word, the, the needs of each one of us, God, because you created us, Lord. So we ask, Father God, that you just continue to do what only you can do, Father God. Your word says that you would meet all of our needs, Father God, so we stand on your promise, God, to do just that. Some, God, are struggling with financial matters, and some are struggling with relationship matters, and some are struggling with money matters, and some are struggling with just matters. So God, whatever bothers us, we know bothers you, Father God. It matters to you, Father God. So we ask God that you would have mercy right now, Father God. Let us take our focus off of that that's bothering us. Let us take our focus off of that that would hinder us from giving you praise this morning. Let us focus on you, Father God. Let us keep our minds, our thoughts fixed on you. Lead us, God, according to your will and according to your way. Help us, Father God, continue to put your will before ours and be as Jesus modeled. Not my will, but thy will be done. We ask, God, that you would speak to the matters that we're dealing with, Father. Help us, God, to focus on you. And as we focus on you, Father God, we're going to be like that Samaritan that was on his way to the priest. And he looked at his body and realized that he no longer suffered from leprosy. And so he came back. He came back to give gratitude to the one who healed him. So as we focus on you, God, we give gratitude for you, God for creating us in your image. 
and for loving us, loving us in spite of ourselves. So we just thank you this morning for being who you are and doing what you do. Lord God, before I end this prayer, I want to ask, Father God, that you would let someone be encouraged by the prayer. Let someone be encouraged by the songs. Let someone be encouraged by your word this morning, Father, that they might come running saying, what must I do to be saved? We ask, God, that you would speak to the heart of the issue. Speak to our hearts, God. Holy Spirit, talk to us this morning. We just thank you, Father, for doing what you do, for being who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from John chapter, uh, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 through 17, from the New Revised Standard Version reads, I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven on account of his name. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young people, because you have conquered the evil one. I am writing to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young people, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eye, the pride of the riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. And the world and its desires are passing away. And the world and its desires are passing away. And the world and its desires are passing away. But those who do the will of God live forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, St. Andrews. Good it's time for our church announcements. We have a safe and open place for you to discuss whatever lies heavy on your heart. Every first Sunday, we host our Soul Check Congregational Care Check-In. It's a meeting designed, a face-to-face -face meeting designed to have a conversation with everyone in the congregation and our online community. We want to connect with you, to reach out to you, to find out where you are, and to pray with you. To quote John Wesley, how is it with your soul? Meet our own Pastor Gibson today at 5 p.m. on Zoom phone and video conference by dialing 1-346-248-7794. And enter meeting ID 926 1695 4662 with passcode 906 461. Or you may go to zoom.com and enter the same meeting ID listed on the screen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Are these Bible scriptures? How do you know? When was the last time you studied the Bible for yourself? Let's start now. 
in our new small group summer adult Bible series starting July 8th for, seven, for four weeks. It will be at 7 p.m. on phone and video conference. This is a free class open to anyone in the congregation or in our online community. Today is the last day to register. Go to our website, www.standrewsftw.org slash adult hyphen Bible hyphen study or complete the registration form you received in the mail. All materials will be supplied for free at no cost. For more information, contact Daisy DeBose at dmddubos at yahoo.com or you may call the church office at 817-336-2117. Those who have already registered will receive an email containing your materials. These are required for each class. Conference details will be sent by text and email. Let us honor God this way and make time for him outside of Sunday worship services. Announcing our virtual vacation Bible school, July 27th through 29th, from 12 to 3 p.m. for children ages 5 through 14. It will be held virtually online. Children will need computers and internet access and parental supervision. The church will not com provide computers, obviously. <laughs> Complete your registration form that was mailed to you or emailed to you to Daisy DeVose or go to our website, www.standrewsftw.org slash vacation hyphen Bible hyphen school or leave the following information in the church office, the child's name, age, parent's name, phone, and confirmation of computer and internet access. All these are due by July 11th at 6 p.m. The education ministry would like to honor all our St. Andrews graduates. This has been expanded to now include elementary, middle, high school, and college graduates. If you know any member of St. Andrews that has graduated this past spring, 2021, please submit their name, the school they graduated from, the school they will attend in the fall, and a picture to Mrs. Daisy DeBose by email at dmd underscore dubose at yahoo.com or leave a message for Daisy, Mrs. DeBose, excuse me, in the church office. All these materials are due today. If you have already submitted this information, you don't have to resend it. Join us for Sunday school every Sunday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. This will, this will continue on Zoom by phone and video conference until further notice. This gives you time to travel to church for Sunday worship service. Each Wednesday at 6.30 a.m., our prayer ministry invites you to attend our intercessory prayer line. Everyone from our congregation and online community is invited to attend. Obviously, you don't have to be a member. <laughs> For con conference details, go to our website, www.standrewsftw.org slash prayer hyphen ministry, or you may call the church office for details, or you may comment now. Please check our website, social media pages, and our email, or your email, excuse me, for upcoming announcements and opportunities. Remember, you can always call the church office if you have any questions about these announcements. That number is 817-336-2117. Thank you.
grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we've won. I could go
just to allow my heart to turn toward God and remember all the things that I'm grateful for right now in this moment. Amen. Brother Barry said when he walked into the doors of the church, he was just glad. His heart just leaped with joy. Grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. When we look back over this last year and a half, and even before that, Gratitude should have been in our hearts even before coronavirus, amen? And we think of all the things that we've lost and all the things that we have not lost. We ought to be grateful. We ought to be grateful that in the midst of it all, God yet kept us. We ought to be grateful that in the midst of it all, what we lost, God has seen us through. We ought to be grateful this morning that as we show up this morning, it was because of the goodness of God, and we are grateful. Anything you're grateful in your life for this moment, amen, as you let your mind look back, amen. Just even in this moment, Lord, I'm just glad to be alive. Lord, I'm, I'm just glad to be seen and, and to see others. Lord, I'm just glad to take in the breath of life. Lord, I'm just, I'm just grateful that you're so mindful of me. Lord, you didn't have to do it. But you did it, honey, how I'm grateful, God, as we gather. We gather as grateful people. It's hard to abide in Christ and have Christ abide in you if you're not grateful, amen. If you're hard-hearted and selfish and you know it, think it's all about you, it's hard to have Christ in the center, amen, where you have made yourself. So we come grateful today that God is at the center of our lives. We give God praise. Uh, part of our scripture was already lifted up. Um, by Minister Masters in 1 John, the second chapter. Uh, but I'm going to read just a portion of that. I'm going to read verses 15 through 17. If you have your Bibles, amen. I pray not to stumble in the reading of the word, but in case something happens, amen. It may change the trajectory of, of God's intended word. We want you to be able to have it uh, in your sight and in your heart also. So whether it's on your device, bring your Bible to church. Amen. We don't have pew Bibles right now. And you may say, well, Pastor, you don't preach the whole time out of it. Well, I'm starting in it. Amen. That's enough to get us started. Amen. And so I want you to start in it too. But bring your word, whether it's on your phone or tablet or your actual Bible, but bring your word so that you might see it for yourself. There in 1 John, the second chapter, Verses 15 through 17, we find these words written. Don't love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Everything that is in the world, the craving for whatever the body feels, the craving for whatever the eyes see, and the arrogant pride in one's possessions is not in the Father. Now, these are the things that are in the world that, that, that God has a part of. Now, it doesn't say that God doesn't love the world, because John 3, 16 tells us what? For God so loved the world yes, yes. that he created. But there are some 
powers and there are some values and understandings that have come out of our own sinfulness that preside in the world that God has a problem with. And particularly, it says here, the craving for whatever the body feels, the craving for whatever the eyes see, and the arrogant pride in one's possessions is not in the Father, but is of the world. We can't be having those cravings and say that we are in Christ or that Christ is in us. Christ comes to us, but we're not abiding in him when we allow those things and those values to overtake us from what God desires of us. And the 17th verse says, and the world and its cravings are passing away. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are passing away. But yeah. the person who does the will of God remains forever. Some yeah. things are temporary and some yeah. things yeah. are eternal. Amen. Amen. And so what are we setting our hearts on? So we want to reason this morning uh, together on the subject, love what matters. Love what what matters. Let me share this and then we'll have prayer. The world is full of things that we can love at the expense of our relationships with Jesus. We desire and crave success, money, status, or accomplishments as things that become valuable above everything else to us. We need to make the conscious decision to love what matters most in our lives by giving all of our time and our energy and our affection to them. Where does Jesus fit into your equation of who and what matters? The things of the world all promise to make us feel worthy and loved, but Jesus is the only one showing us that we are already loved. Hallelujah. We are already fully loved. Let us pray. Holy God, we come to you right now, God, ready to hear your word to embody your word, to live out your word, oh God. We pray your Holy Spirit, oh God, will uh, reveal to us uh, uh, your desire, your will for us, oh God, and how to live it out. We pray, God, that as we submit and surrender to you right now, it doesn't matter what's gone before or what's going to go after, just right now, God, help us to lay aside the waste that so easily beset us that we might hear from you. Touch our hearts, touch our minds, oh God. Transform us, oh God, in that touch that we might be lifted higher and closer to you. God, we thank you for the one on our left, the one on our right, the one who sits before us and behind us. God, there's no better time than right now to really appreciate somebody sitting with us. Amen. And so, God, we thank you and ask that you would bless them richly also. Now may the words of my mouth and the attitudes of all of our hearts be found acceptable, Lord, in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Love what matters. Yeah. We've come to the end of our series, Collide. Thank you, ushers, for your ministry. Collide is about the decisions that we make when the world's values collide with God's values. When the world's ways collide with God's ways. And just keep on living. If you haven't found where they rub up against each other, yeah. just keep on yeah. going. Or maybe you, you're so uh, prone in one position that you can't even see when they come into conflict. Isn't it something to be able to live holy that, that the world's values don't, don't, don't affect you? Well, none of us are quite there yet. Amen. 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 <laughs> We're striving. Yeah. We're striving. But we always come day by day into some situation or some thought process or some conversation in which the world's ways collide with God's ways and God's values. So uh, we laid the foundation of standing firm in our faith when the world attempts to convince us of a different value system. Amen. And then we talked about the importance of allowing God to transform our minds and our lives. And then last week, we spoke about receiving truth from God's word. Yes. The truth wants to come at you or what's conceived or perceived or pronounced to be truth from everything else, and we'll listen to it and we'll receive. But what about the truth that comes from God's word? And so we want to receive God's truth because when we have that truth, it makes us free indeed. Amen. Yeah. So that the lies of the world, the, 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 the possessions, the, the temptations of the world don't overtake us. 
and that, that apple, amen, is not quite as shiny as it used to be in our eyes. Praise God. So today when we close out the series, we're going to talk about love, what matters, because what ties all this all together is for us to determine what really matters in our lives. And do we love it? Not just in word, but in time and talents and resources and energy and with passion. So uh, what do we spend, what time do we give to the things that we love most? Y'all know that, that I would run up and down the road to uh, Marlin, and uh, a lot of times uh, I'd have to run down and run right back. And sometimes there would be things that I really wanted to do. Sometimes there would be things uh, that uh, would be good to do. Sometimes I just wanted to rest. And I'm not saying put my finger and the thumb in the pie and saying what a good, what a good girl am I, but I, I love my mama. Yes. And so what may have seemed like great sacrifices to others, it wasn't so much a sacrifice to me because I loved her because she matters to me. Yes. The Bible talks about recognizing the things that are important to us taking seriously, choosing time to spend time with God in order to grow in our love of God. Well, Pastor, you always talking about spending time with God. You always talking about reading the Word. Because that is the one thing that we as Christians <laughs> get into that the world is not into. And how do we distinguish ourselves? How do we grow as children of God yet to find ourselves spending time with God and in God's word. If you want to be good at who you feel you're called to be or what you're called to do, you have to spend some time with it. Amen. Yeah. You have to t spend some time with people who can help grow you. It is no different with being in a relationship with Jesus Christ. We forget that that is at the center of who we are in Christ, is developing the relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why we have so much hell in the world and hell in the church is because we don't develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. We fall out about everything. Somebody said this. Somebody did that. But where is Christ in the midst of it all that brings every the bigger picture back to mind? Well, I can't fall out with everybody. If Jesus calls me to love, I, I can't be mad at everybody. I can't not forgive everybody of just what Jesus calls us to do because he sees the bigger picture to everything. So it causes us to have a different set of values and a different set of ways than the world. And so when we want to grow in our love for God, we have to spend time with God. We have to love what matters even to God, and it ought to matter to us. When we do so, we'll be drawn closer to God rather than the things of the world. And if you have the in your Bible, I want to read that passage just one more time because I want it to set into your hearing as we proceed in the message, verses 15 through 17. Don't love the world or the things in the world. For if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Everything that is in the world, the craving for whatever the body feels, the craving for whatever the eyes see, and the arrogant pride in one's possessions is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world and its cravings are passing away. But the person who does the will of God remains forever. John talks about cravings here in this passage. So we're tempted to crave the things of the world. In the natural, we are tempted to crave the things of the world. So the first step to loving what matters is to correct the craving. Correct the crave. The world around wants us to, wants to flood my mind with the things that are temporary. The world defines them as important. However, I want my mind to be governed completely in Christ Jesus. Our cravings for temporary things have gotten us and, and, and the world in a whole lot of trouble. In the moment of demanding respect or feeling disrespected, some act out in ways that hurt themselves or hurt others. One person will shoot another in a moment of feeling disrespected or unloved or someone will retaliate with road rage because in the moment they felt disrespected or that somebody had taken their power away. In the moment 
People crave to be right in the moment. Sometimes you're right and sometimes you're wrong, but what does the desire to always be right cause you to do or to treat others? A ca classic example is in the movie Life with Eddie Murphy and uh, uh, Martin Lawrence, thank you. Uh, they were uh, sentenced to life uh, in a prison and was, it was uh, in 1932, set in that era. And Eddie Murphy's father had given him uh, a pocket watch. And in the movie, an officer, when they got in trouble before they were sent to prison, uh, the officer took the, beat them down and took the pocket watch. And later on, years later, as they were at this prison farm, uh, this officer had become a warden. And he had been pegged to become the warden of the prison where uh, Eddie Murphy was, spent, was serving out his time. Now, we're going to cut to the end and to uh, the outtakes, which are things that are not in the movie proper, but things that, especially as comedians, they do stuff to just kind of disrupt the plot. And so we find in the outtakes uh, that the, 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 the man had come to the prison yard, and there Eddie Murphy was with him, and uh, he pulls out a pocket watch. And Eddie Murphy looks at the pocket watch, and he said, that's my daddy's watch. He shoots him, and then he goes over to pick up the watch, and he looks at the watch, he said, that's not my daddy's watch. <laughs> the things that we'll do in the moment, in the moment. Yeah. help Lord Jesus, yeah. can get us in real trouble. We have already highlighted in the, pa in the past series uh, messages uh, the different worldly desires. Uh, John names them cravings cravings that have to do with our flesh. For example, we, 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 he says things like physical pleasure. Maybe you can relate uh, with this one. Uh, the desire for, for physical intimacy or closeness, uh, a connection, uh, may lead you to websites time after time that fulfill you physically for about five minutes, amen. And it's fleeting, and you're always looking for that. It may lead you to times where you may try drugs to numb yourself, uh, but in the long run, it still doesn't do what you want it to do. It's temporary. Yeah. Oftentimes, we go on finding temporary solutions to situations that are much longer than that. He lists our cravings for, for everything we see around us. Another way would be to say the lust of the eyes. Many, many things in the world look glamorous to us at first, at first glance. Maybe you desire to be famous, uh, to have people know your name. Amen. I think that's interesting about uh, Facebook and all of these things that, especially our young people in this day, and some of our older folk too, they get upset if you don't like what they put out. They get upset if they don't get enough views. They get enough, they get upset if, if certain people don't comment. Well, I commented on theirs and they're not commenting on mine. They're not helping me to get 5,000 people so I can move from, from having, what do you move up to 5,000? Get your own page or something. <laughs> Once you get 5,000 followers or friends. The point that he's trying to make here is we're, we're searching for, for things that are fleeting. Uh, uh, people to love us in ways that are only as long as you're doing something for them. But the love of God, the love of God loves you when you're up and when you're down. The love of God is there for you when you're in and when you're out. The love of God is eternal and ongoing. And yet we forsake the love of God for the love of the world. There are things that may look glamorous to us. We're looking at at, at Britney Spears, who's been in the news lately, uh, who can't even live her life, amen, uh, because all people see when they think of her are dollar signs. Uh, sometimes that when we desire to just have fame, people will just see us for money and for our celebrity and what they can get out of, out of us. It's hard to find people who love you when all they look at is what you have, not what's in you. So be careful what we seek out. Be careful what the status that we search for. And remember that your gifts will make room for you. You don't have to try to be famous. Just use your gifts. 
You don't have to worry about the world knowing you. Just use what God has given you in such a way that you're doing the job that God has called you to. And so I think God wants to correct I crave right now. When we have loaded our meals with sugar and salt and high carbs and fats, our body responds in such a way that we crave those things and our bodies and minds become sluggish and they stop pumping on all cylinders and we build a dislike for the taste of healthier foods that fuel our bodies to make us more productive and healthier. That's what the world's values and ways do to us. They make us sluggish in loving the things that appear and holy and forgiving and patient and just and that make us most alive, make us most merciful, make us most holy, make us most forgiving, make us more like Christ. And so God wants to give you beauty for your ashes. God says, I have something better for you. The weight that the world puts on you is heavy, but Jesus says my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and that he will not put more on you than you can bear. But the world will. God wants you to hunger after something more than this world can give you, and that's his love. And and, and the way in which we find God's love is first by finding God. Finding God. So God wants to change uh, our cravings, amen. He he wants to change our crave. And when he changes our crave, he wants us to look for his favor in our lives. So elsewhere in 1 John, uh, the Bible tells us that God is love, amen. And, And when we find God, we find true love. In the verse we read, I'll read to you in just a moment. We have to pay attention to how John ends this section. He says, the things of the world, even the world itself, will one day pass away. To close out the teaching, Jesus says, uh, John says, but anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Let that sink in for a moment. The things of this world will pass away. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Everything in this world will pass away. My God, my God. Uh, So if I had something here and and, and I could write on this board, I, I could write everything of this world that we think is important in this world, all the values of the world, all of those things that quote unquote, make us happy and all of that. And and, and I can put on the other side, God's word. But guess what? Things come come along that wipe off the things on this side, amen. There's tragedy, there's so many things that come and just with the time of of, of the earth, these things are gonna pass away. But, But God's word is forever and ever. It doesn't matter whether you're happy or sad, God's word is still the same. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, God's word is still the same. It doesn't matter whether you're inside the church or outside the church. The word of God is still the same. Luke 21 and 13 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Hallelujah. God's word word will last forever. So why don't we get into that which will last forever, which will take us uh, uh, where we're trying to go. Amen. Uh, uh, Sometimes we we, we want the newest model of anything. Amen. And and, and we're we're, we're content to trade out uh, every chance we get. But what do you trade for Jesus? Well, what is there that's worthy of being traded for Jesus in your life? The world's love is conditional. Conditional love basically means that you are only showing love to those who believe you you believe deserve it. Uh, You're only showing love to those that that, that are like you, that you like. Uh, You're only showing love to those who, who bow down to you or whatever. But that's not the kind of love that... That, that God calls from us or that God gives us. Amen. God's love says that while you were yet a sinner, yeah. 
He died on the cross for your yeah, sin. Yeah. Uh, his love says that, 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 that before you even, you even knew yourself, he already knew you and had a calling upon your life. Yeah. That's unconditional love. That matters not where you are, where you've been, what you've done. The love of God is yet reaching out to you. The only question now is, will you love him back? <laughs> will you love God back? And, and see, it's a daily decision. We have to make the decision daily, not just once a year, to love God with our whole heart. Hallelujah. Uh, people believe that you can pray the sinner's prayer and invite Jesus to be the king of your heart and, and, and of your life, and you're good to go. But if you meant them as mere words... They're hollow. I want us to understand the decision to follow Christ with our hearts has to be made every single day because you're going to have challenges every single day. You have to renew that love day by day. Yes, you've been married for 42 years. Praise God for the day that you said I do. But did you know that you've been having to say I do every day since that day? I do. I do. I do in sickness and in hell. I do. For rich and for poor, I do. And it's the same with God. We continue to say, I do, because the world is always trying to get you to say, I won't. I don't. Never again. The world's values will entice you because every day you're going to be confronted with all kinds of worldly temptations to give your life to something other than Jesus Christ. John knew you'd be confronted with this. He knew that it would come about. And so Jesus knew that we would be confronted with this also. And he gave his word as a guide. But the question we ask of you today, do the decisions I make align with the word of God? Do the, does God's word matter to me in such a way that I align my life, that I align the way I treat folk, that I align the way I do business, that I align the way that I even uh, operate in my leisure? Does it line up with reflecting that I am a disciple of Jesus Christ? We want the benefits without the participation. We want the award without running the race. We want the victory without the struggle. We want the favor, but we don't want the presence of God to transform anything about our lives. But Jesus calls for a new life in us. He calls us to be all in 24-7, not straddling the fence, not switching sides when it's convenient, not determined by how we feel in the moment, but God calls us to have a commitment to stand with him. It's hard to benefit from something that you do every now and then. It's when you become consistent that you can see the greatest growth, the greatest success, the greatest blessing. God calls us to be all in every day. Oh, someone says, I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. See if I can be completely yours. My life and my love, I'll leave in your hands. I'll do everything as your will commands. I know it's not much. Your gifts to repay, it's all I can give. And all I can say is I'm yours, Lord. <laughs> everything, everything, everything that I am, everything that I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. See if I can be completely yours. Hallelujah. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to redeem the world. You could say that Jesus was sent on a collision course with the world. His desires, as we see uh, in 2 Peter 3 and 9, it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. Thank God for patience today. Yeah. He is patient. If we serve the impatient God, we've been out here a long time ago. Amen. Amen. If we serve the impatient God, we'd never have the forgiveness because we'd never measure up. If we, God was impatient with us, we would need his grace and mercy. Instead, he's patient 
not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Yeah, we get distracted. Yes, we go astray. The negative and lifeless message of the world is, is, is pervasive, is always enticing us. But, but I believe that we can make a conscious decision today and each day after this to say no to the world and say yes to the things of God, to say yes to the things that matter. See, because when you find that the world's value collide with God's values, with kingdom values in your life, uh, will you make a decision to choose the path of Christ? Because it matters. It matters that I can love rightly and be loved the same. It matters that I can forgive and be forgiven. It matters that I do justly and call our society uh, uh, to operate justly. It matters that I extend mercy and receive mercy in return. It matters that we can be poured into so that we can pour out upon others. It matters that I can get what I need and then I can help, so I can help somebody else along the way. It matters that I grow in Christ as Savior and it means to me that it means a lot to me that you do too. It matters that I'm successful in this day-to-day -day journey called life. And it's important to me that you're successful in the midst of it too. What I, it's important what I love because it shapes what matters in my life. What matters to you? Does it matter to you that you spend time daily in the Word of God? Does it matter to you that you join a small group that can be there for you and help you grow? Does it matter that you volunteer your time uh, in the body of Christ? Does it matter to you uh, that you mentor somebody else along the way, that as you grow, you grow others? Does it matter to you that you're accountable to God and to one another? Does it matter to you that you use your gifts to build the kingdom of God? Does it matter to you that your cravings are curbed? so that you have a healthy appetite for Jesus Christ. It should matter. Yeah. What do you love today? Do you love what really matters? What God calls of us? So I want to extend the invitation today. God wants you to know that not only does God matter, but the things of God matter too. Bearing the fruit of the Spirit matter. How you treat others matter. How you operate in your business matters. How you raise your family matters. How you walk down the street matters. Hallelujah. What's important to you? And if it matters, are you giving it your time, your energy, and your passion? God extends the invitation today. If there's one, who would recognize right now that he matters. His love matters, his forgiveness matters, his salvation and deliverance matters, his redemption and reconciliation matters, him restoring you matters. Knowing that you're loved in him matters. That matters to you today. Will you accept Christ as Lord and Savior? Will you say yes, Lord, yes to your will and your way? Will you say, Lord, come into my life, forgive me of my sin and mean it in your heart? Lord, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to grow in you. I want to be more like you. Thank God for Mike and all those other folks, but I want to be like Christ. I want to be able to live, and I'd have to look over my shoulder all the time at what the world is doing or what the world might send that. I want to have a forward-looking faith in what Christ has in head, ahead of me. If you're here and you desire that, will you come this morning, whether you're here in the physical church or whether you are in our virtual church, if you want to be baptized, if you want to be restored, made anew in your relationship with Jesus Christ, I want you to come right now. Maybe God has touched your heart in such a way that maybe you're not uh, uh, one who has been so disconnected from Christ through the church, but maybe in your heart. May maybe you have lived this life on the edge and not allow Christ to be at your center and you it to be at the center of Christ. I want you to come today. I want you to come today. Let God fill your heart with his love and his grace this morning. The world will tell you a lot of things, amen. You're this, you're that, you're not this, and you're not that, but God calls you beloved. When you believe in him, he says that you are my child. 
when, 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 when you come to give yourself to him, you are his beloved. Will you come to Christ this morning? Will you allow him to fill you and give you a different kind of craving that's for him and not for the world? If you're here, they're going to sing a song of invitation to allow you time to make your choice. If you're on our virtual church, if you would just in the comment section let us know that yes, I want to receive Christ or yes, I want to be baptized or yes, I want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ through St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. Will you come? Will you come? Will you call us on our, on, on our church phone, 817-336-2117? Will you contact us on our, on our, our, our website? Will you contact us through our, our email, info at standrewsftw.org? Whichever way you reach out, God will bless it. If you're here right now, don't let anything sit in your lap. Amen. Get up and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Here am I. Here am I. But when the day comes that we all have to stand for ourselves, amen. We may have been ashamed to acknowledge here, amen, because somebody will look and somebody will see and somebody will say something. But don't worry about that. This is between you and God. If you're here and you desire that relationship, will you come? The invitation is extended. The song is being sung. Will you make your decision? If the ship of your life is tossing on the sea of strife. You need someone. If you feel so all alone and your house is not a home, you need someone. If it seems like isn't fair and there's no one left to share all those lonely days and nights when things just won't turn out right and you need someone to care yeah. and someone to just be there you need someone. Who is your someone today? I'll give you Jesus. He's the peace that passes all understanding. I'll give you Jesus. He's the perfect love. That cast is out all fears. And I'll give you Jesus. He's the water that you drink and never thirst again. I'll give you Jesus. I give you Jesus. If the pressure's all around, keep your spirit to the ground. You need someone. If your body is in pain and your health you can't regain, you need someone if the times that you have tried with all the strength you have inside and it seems that you have failed remember on the cross he paid all the bitterness and grief to give you peace and sweet relief. He is that someone that you need. And I'll give you Jesus. He's the peace that passes all understanding. I'll give you Jesus. 
He's the perfect love that casts out all fears. And I'll give you Jesus. He's the water that you drink and never thirst again. I give you Jesus. My friend, I give you Jesus. He's everything. He's everything you need. And I'll give you Jesus. Oh, my friend, I'll give you Jesus. Amen. 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 We thank God for the Holy Spirit that is at work. Amen. Amen. Even before we see it in the natural, we know that it has already happened that somebody's life is being turned toward him. That somebody's heart is being lifted. Yes. Somebody's soul is being saved. Yes, Lord. Somebody is making that connection. Thank you, God. Yes. That that someone for them is Jesus. Yes. And that he is who and what matters. Let's prepare now our hearts for our Holy Communion. Amen. You should have your elements. Uh, if there are some who did not were not able to receive, we will make sure that we get you taken care of this week. Amen. For it is Christ who invites to his table all who love him or earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. So let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love, O oh Lord. We've not loved our neighbors, and we've not heard the cry of the needy. We ask that you would forgive us and free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Having prayed that prayer, hear now the good news. That Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us in the name of Jesus Christ. You are forgiven in your response. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory be to God. Hear this. That on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke the bread that represented his body that he would give at a later time, he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. For this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Has God done anything in your life that you need to remember? When the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant. You know the one that says, love the Lord your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself, love as I have loved you. Poured out this blood. The price for this new covenant was poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with the cross Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and that Christ will come again. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gather here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Lord, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world. The body, the hands, the feet, the knees 
all of it for, the, for Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. For it is through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Let us pray with confidence the prayer that he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Truly the body of Christ has been broken for you. Praise be unto God. And the blood of Christ has been poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Praise be to God. We invite you to take your elements. If you need help in opening them, we invite you to raise your hand and our ushers with new gloves on will come and assist you as you have need. Ask that you would take it that the body of Christ given for you, that you would partake in the blood of Christ, that you would drink and receive. But I ask that you would do it prayerfully in your own time as the choir sings, that you would consider the goodness of God in your life and that you would partake of the elements. pronounced benediction, you will be able to uh, dispose of your cups uh, as you dismiss from this place. It is offering time. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. We invite you now into the spirit of giving as we have celebrated the one who has given us everything, even through this sacred meal. As you prepare to give, remember how grateful we are to God and just how good God is.
to us. And to all of us and to others. We praise God for being our all in our all. Mother and father were passed away, but the Lord is forever there. And so as we give during this time, let us give with a grateful and cheerful heart. Let us give generously. Uh, we invite you to prepare your gifts. If you are in the sanctuary, we're going to invite you to give in our giving basket that's at the back. If you are giving virtually, you may give by the Givelify app or you may go to our website, info at standrewsftw.org and press the give button. Or you may drop it off at the church office or even mail it in to 522 Missouri Avenue, Fort Worth, Texas, 76104. Somebody said, any way you get it there, it'll be appreciated. Amen. It will go to the work of Christ. We're preparing even now for a new food drive and some other mission opportunities. So uh, know that that which you give not only goes to um, care for our responsibilities uh, in the church, but especially outside of the walls of this church as we seek to impact lives and make disciples. Let us pray. God, we ask that you would bless our offering, O oh God, that we might give knowing, O oh God, that when we give to you, O oh God, it is always a blessing. It is always a privilege. It is always a joy. Because you ask us not to give out of what we don't have, but out of that which you have blessed us to have. And so, God, let us hold nothing back but to remember, O oh God, that all things belong to you already. And so bless the gift and the giver, O oh God, and for the ministry that is intended, oh God, we ask that you would raise us up, that we might be a beacon of love and light and hope and help in the community. We thank you, oh God, in advance for what will happen, knowing that you have a blessing for each of us. This is our prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for coming to worship today. We are blessed of God. Will you just look around and, and wave at somebody and say thank you for being here? Just wave and a smile in the mask even. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. Praise God. Praise God. I want to invite you to stand and we will have our benediction. And as I said, when you dismiss, you may put your gifts in the giving basket and your communion elements. If you would, there's a trash back there and you can dispose of those. Don't forget, 5 o'clock soul check on our Zoom. You already have the information. If you don't have it, will you call somebody and get that information? We need it to be churchwide, everybody to come on so we know how it is with your soul. Amen. To all of our guests who may be with us here and all around the world, thank you for coming in and sharing in worship with us. Now, may the only wise God who is able to keep you and present you faultless on that day, May his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you in your homes, in your workplaces, in your community. Go now in peace, knowing that God goes with you. Amen. 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 Tell the world that you go.